ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another video. What we're going to be doing today is we are going to be doing our week three college football best bets. So we're going to go over every game for the top 25 teams, try to predict the outcome, look at the money lines, the spreads, and the over-unders. Go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. If you have any comments, drop them below and I will respond. So we're focusing on the best bets. That's the betting portion for every game in the top 25. We do this every week for every college game and every NFL game. So like I mentioned, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Week three is here. We have a lot of teams that are on bye weeks right now, so we don't have a full top 25 playing, but we do have a lot of really good games slated for the week. Let's go ahead and get things started. The very first game that we have coming up for week three is actually a Friday night game. It is going to be at 8 p.m. on Fox. We have the Arizona Wildcats on the road versus Kansas State. Kansas State is at home. They are seven-point favorites. The over-under is a high-scoring one, 60 and a half. ESPN gives Kansas State a 72.8% chance to win this game. They are the favorites. They did not have a good game in Week 2, but they won it versus Tulane. There was the fumble at the end. Kansas State brought it back for a touchdown to go ahead. Had that not happened, they might have very well lost that game. The main thing that stood out to me from that game was their tackling in the secondary was awful. They did not play well at all. There was guys running wide open the whole game. But Kansas State is a lot better than that. They've had a top 30 offense, a top 30 defense in the Big 12. A very well-coached team. You have Avery at quarterback, the highest recruited quarterback in Kansas State history. They can usually run the ball. They can pass the ball. Did not play their best game last week, but they did get the win. And then you have the Wildcats. They've been scoring a lot, but they've also been giving up a lot of points. They're led by Noah Fafita, one of the better quarterbacks in the country. He's slinging it up and down the field. And you also have McMillan at the wide receiver position. A lot of people have him as a high first round pick as wide receiver. This game could easily turn into a shootout and it's also a potential upset game for Kansas State because if it's a shootout, whoever has the ball last could win it. But I'm going to go with Kansas State to win this one. 33-24. I have them covering the spread, but I will be going with the under. We're now moving on to our Saturday games in at 3.30 p.m. on Fox. We have number nine Oregon Ducks on the road at Oregon State. The Civil War is back, the in-state rivalry. The Beavers at home are 16-point underdogs, so the Ducks are favored by 16. The over-under is 50 and a half, and Oregon has a 68.6% chance to win this game. Coming into this season, Oregon would have had a way higher percent to win this game, but they have looked awful their first two weeks. They barely won versus Idaho. They barely won last weekend in week two versus Boise State, who is a very good team led by Gentry at the running back position. But they won 37-34, to one on a last-minute field goal. That's not good enough. Something's gone wrong with this team. I'm not hitting the panic button at all. But due to the events of the last two weeks, it's really led you to not have faith in them being able to cover spreads because they have yet to be able to do that. And they have yet to have a good win, and they really haven't played a great team yet. Oregon State, that's a rivalry game. So this game could potentially be a potential upset. That is always there, but I think Oregon is going to get it together. An extremely talented team, a top five roster overall, led by Dylan Gabriel. The big issue is they're not pushing the ball at all vertically down the field because they're getting no push on the offensive line. They cannot run the ball. They can't give Dylan Gabriel time to throw the ball, but they're way better than that. There's just things they need to get worked on. Defense is there. They weren't there last weekend, but we know they have a top 10 defense. We know they have a top 10 offense. It's just at what point are they going to put it all together? If it's taking you this long, we're in week three. Once you play a good team, you're going to get caught and you're going to lose it. They need to get it right, and they must get it right this weekend because the Buckeyes are coming up, and that defense is going to shut this offense down if they don't get everything fired up. But Oregon... Having a very strong season since the Pac-12 was dissolved, and they're only giving up 7.5 points per game. Oregon's got to get those points up into the 40s. I have Oregon winning this one, 38 to 21, and barely covering that spread. And I'm also going to go with the over. This is one to watch, though. I'm not confident in that at all. I'm going off of the faith that Dan Lanning is going to get this team right, and that their offense is finally going to start clicking this weekend. 
The next game we're looking at at 3.30 p.m. on the ACC Network. We have Ball State visiting number 10 Miami Hurricanes. Miami's a very, very big favorite here. 36.5 point favorite. The over-under is 55.5. You have Ball State coming off the bye week. They're fully healthy. They're ready to come into Miami. They have a quarterback in Samanza. He's been passing the ball accurately. They've been pushing the ball down the field. They're healthy right now. Miami, if they have any weakness, is actually in their secondary. Yes, they played well versus the Gators. That's not a big accomplishment. But their secondary, even though they won handedly last weekend, there was actually guys that were open. There just wasn't the skilled position players to push them too much down the field. But Miami is extremely talented. They're going to have a top 20 defense. They're going to have a top 20 offense. One of the best talented teams in the country. ESPN has them as the number 10 overall roster. You have Cam Ward. You have Damian Martinez. You have Fletcher. You have George Horton, Restrepo, Arroyo. This team is loaded at every position. A top 10 offense, a top 10 defensive line. They're going to get a lot of sacks on Ball State, but I see Ball State getting just enough points in garbage time to where that spread might not get covered. But Miami's going to handle this game easily. I have them winning it 48-16, to not covering the spread, and I'm going with the over. Our next game at 3.30 on the SEC Network, we have Tulane visiting number 15 Oklahoma Sooners. The Sooners at home, 13.5 point favorites. The over-under is 47.5. Tulane's coming off of that heartbreaking loss versus Kansas State. They had it. They lost it. They could easily get demoralized. Had they won that game, they'd be coming into this game hot, coming off the upset. But now they're coming in low. They had a game versus top 25 team, and they let it go. How are they going to rebound how are they going to respond but they did show that they are capable of passing and running the ball Oklahoma they're not riding really hot right now yes they won their last weekend but they barely beat Houston what was it 16 to 12 or 16 to 14 an extremely embarrassing game but we know the talent the Sooners have you have Jackson Arnold he just needs to make sure he doesn't have any turnovers a very talented quarterback a five-star guy coming out of high school they have playmakers on the line Running back, wide receiver, tight end. Brent Venables has recruited that defense. This is the number 11 overall roster, according to ESPN. Very talented team. Whatever showed up in week two, that's not the Sooners. Look for them to get things back on track. But they need to be mindful of how much Tulane pushed a very talented Kansas State team last weekend. Do not take this team, this game for granted looking at your SEC schedule coming up later on. Take this game, play this game on Saturday, beat Tulane, and then you can concentrate. It. Tulane is not a scrub. They know how to play football, but I'm going to go with the Sooners winning this one 38-24, just barely covering that spread, and I'm going with the over. The next game we're looking at is going to be a really fun one. You have UTSA at number two, Texas Longhorns. This game is in Austin. The Longhorns at home are 34.5 point favorites. The over-under is 54.5. This game is going to be on ABC. UTSA, they actually had a really good season last year, but they've kind of fallen off this season. Their biggest issue is they have not been able to run the ball. A team that cannot run the ball is now playing the Texas Longhorns, a top five overall talented roster, a top 10 defense, a top 10 offense. They can run it. They can throw it. They lost a lot of players on the defensive line, and they've recruited this team so deep. UTSA can't run the ball, period. And now you have Texas's defensive line. They're going to shut down that 2.5 yards per carry that they average. They're going to knock that down the one or two. They're going to get so much pressure on the opposing quarterback. They're going to easily handle this game. You have Quinn Ewers. You have a stacked running back room. You have a stacked wide receiver room. Yes, they lost Worthy. They lost Mitchell. This team is so deep. This game's not going to be close. They're going to have the backups in by the third quarter. I have Texas winning this one 48-13. That's just, just barely covering that spread, and I'm going with the over. Uh, could that spread not get covered? Yes, that is a very big spread versus an FBS team, but I think Texas will be able to pull it off. The next game we're looking at, we have number four, Alabama, visiting Madison, Wisconsin. 
Alabama on the road, 16-point favorites. The over-under is 50-and-a-half. This game is one that would have been a really fun game, but Wisconsin just really has not been able to generate any type of offense. Last season, they went air raid. They were spreading it out. This year, Tyler Van Dyke comes in as the transfer quarterback. They have a deep running back room, but they're trying to get more back to the Wisconsin Badgers team of old where they can line it up. They can get physical. They can beat you at the line of scrimmage. They just don't have enough playmakers on this team as of yet. Luke Fickle, great coach. He will get them there, but it's going to take some time to flip this roster. You have Phil Longo as the offense coordinator, one of the best offensive minds in football, but we have to give them time, and we have Alabama coming to town now. They are loaded. Milro. Yes, they did not have the best game last weekend versus USF. In the fourth quarter, they were up, was it? 13 to 12 or 14 to 12 and then they had 28 points in the fourth quarter so they took control in the fourth they're ready Phil I'm uh, sorry Phil Long Luke Luke Fickle has played Alabama before in the playoffs when he was at Cincinnati he's familiar with this team he knows what can technically happen when you play Alabama when there's a massive talent disparity here Bama should be able to take this one easily don't overlook Wisconsin. They're going to have a solid defense. They might keep the game close for the first half, but I have Alabama pulling out, winning this one 37 to 17. That's covering the spread, and I'm going with the over. Our next game, we have Oklahoma State visiting Tulsa. Oklahoma State on the road. They are 19 point favorites here. The over under is 62 and a half. Oklahoma State has a 83.1% chance to win this game. Yes, they almost lost to Arkansas at home last weekend. Yes, their defense looked awful. The they, they weren't able to generate any type of run game versus the Arkansas Razorbacks. But we know they're a lot better than that. Bowman, he's like a 30-year senior. He needs to be playing better at the quarterback position. Yes, he made the throws when he was forced to last weekend. This team has worked the portal at the skilled positions. They have a deep running back room. They have a top 10 offensive line experience-wise. And they have one of the best running backs, if not the best running back in all of college football with Ali Gordon. He was the Doak Award winner last season. 1,700 yards, 21 total touchdowns. Put the ball in his hands, run downhill, suck up the clock, get physical. Tulsa, they can move the ball. They do not have a bad offense in any way whatsoever, but Oklahoma State should be able to control the line of scrimmage here. I have the Cowboys winning this one 41 to 20. That's covering the spread, but I'm going to go with the under. Our next matchup at 12 p.m. on ABC, we have number 16 LSU on the road versus South Carolina. This is going to be on ABC. I'm pretty sure this is the college game day game. LSU on the road, seven-point favorites. That's a pretty close spread over under 49.5. LSU with a 51.5% chance to win this game. Practically a 50-50 split. People do not have much confidence or faith in LSU right now. There's a massive talent gap here. But a lot of people aren't expecting LSU to win this game. Like we said, it's 50-50 here, whereas it should be 80-20. LSU is loaded at the skill positions. Nussmeyer did not have his best game last weekend. They gave up some points to Nichols. They lost week one to USC. That's a good loss, but the game was theirs. They gave it up. They lost it. They got out physical at the line of scrimmage in the fourth quarter. That's what lost it. And then last weekend, their defense was playing sloppy. The defense looked much improved versus USC. And then in week two, it looked like that it took a step back. But this is a very talented team. They're still averaging 31 points per game. They need to get that up. But they're giving up 24 points per game. They gave up that many to Nichols. Like I said, that's not acceptable at all. Look for them to try to get things back on track. But South Carolina is running pretty hot right now. They are coming off of beating Kentucky. A lot of people had Kentucky slated to win in week two. South Carolina blew them out, shut them down. A lot of props to Shane Beamer. He had that team fired up and ready to go. We've seen this from South Carolina before a couple years ago when they beat, what, a a top 10 Clemson, then a top 10 Tennessee. They can do it. Can they do it again this weekend? I don't know. The over-under in this game is 49.5. I have LSU going to South Carolina, getting the win. Winning 30-20, to 20, getting some things back on track on the defensive side, getting some turnovers. I have them covering the spread, and I'm going to go with the over just barely. The next game is at 12 p.m. on the Big Ten Network. We have Arkansas State visiting number 17, Michigan. This game is in the big house, Michigan, 20 20- 
three and a half point favorites. The over under is 47 and a half. Arkansas State is a team that's had a lot of successful seasons the last few years. They are a team that can move the ball, but we know Michigan. They are a defensive, physically focused team. They have a great defense. They have a top 10 defense. It didn't look like it in week doc two. They got dragged up and down the field by the Texas Longhorns. They got beat on both sides of the ball. Both lines of scrimmages, they were completely dominated. They were not the more physical team, but they are the defending national champs. They were embarrassed at home last weekend. How are they going to respond? How are they going to rebound in week three? They're back at home versus Arkansas State. They have to shut this team down to save respect, to get respect back from the fans. They only have one starter back on offense from last season's national championship team. They have about five or six defensive starters. Very talented on defense. Warren, Orgy, if you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks. They have a lot they need to sort out on offense. Sharon Moore has his work cut out for him, but this is a bet of his making. This is his team. This is his style of offense they're running. They have to be better, but I have the Wolverines winning this one 38-10, covering the spread and just going over. Our next matchup is one of our only top 25 on top 25 games. We have number 24, Boston College, visiting number 6, Missouri Tigers. This game is a 1245 on the SEC Network. Missouri at home, they're 16-point favorites. The over-under is 53.5. Boston College, they got ranked off of beating Florida State two weeks ago. That's not an impressive win as of right now. But it's a Bill O'Brien-led team. They look so disciplined. They looked a lot better than Boston College has looked for the last decade. You have Thomas Castellanos. He had 1,000 rushing yards last season. He's running up and down the field. They're averaging just under 300 rushing yards per game. They're going to look to force the Tigers to have to beat them at the line of scrimmage. Boston College is going to keep this game on the ground. They're going to suck up clock. They're going to suck up time. They're going to try to hold on to the ball the whole game. Run it, run the clock down, run it, run the clock down over every single down. Try to keep the ball out of Cook's hands on the Missouri offense. For the Missouri Tigers, you have Brady Cook at quarterback. You have Noel. You have Weiss. You have Burden, a very talented offensive team, and their defense has yet to give up a point this season. Even though they've played two garbage teams, it's still impressive to have two back-to-back shutouts outs to your name right now. Missouri, very talented team. They have a very easy SEC schedule. They just have to get through these games and they can basically sleepwalk potentially to a 10 and 2 season. I have Missouri winning this one at home 34 to 24, not covering the spread, but I'm going to go with the over. The next game is number 18, Notre Dame, visiting Purdue at 3.30 p.m. on CBS. Notre Dame on the road, 10-point favorites here. They have a 73.6% chance to win this game, and the over-under is 45.5. Notre Dame, what a massive letdown to Northern Illinois Huskies, a MAC team in Week 2. They let them come to Notre Dame and crush them at the line of scrimmage. Notre Dame could not move the ball to save their life. Riley Leonard had two picks last weekend. He has yet to throw a touchdown. He has yet to look like a competent quarterback this whole season. He didn't look good in week one. He didn't look good in week two. The run game saved them in week one, but they could not run at all last weekend. They were dominated at the line of scrimmage. They they looked like they didn't want to be there, that they were not prepared for that game at all. I don't know what they were looking at because they have an easy schedule this season. It's, it's not like you were looking at the next week. The next week was Purdue. You should be able to handle these teams This is the third time Marcus Freeman has lost to a MAC team. Notre Dame must respond. They must rebound here. This is a potential upset alert game. If they drop this one, if they fall to one and two with the easy schedule they have, there's going to be a fire on Marcus Freeman. This is going to test his mettle as a head coach. He has a very talented team. He has Al Golden as the defensive coordinator. He has a top 10 defense. He has Den Brock one of the better offensive minds in college football as the offensive coordinator. Riley Leonard, I didn't like him at Duke. I've been saying that the whole offseason, the guy can't throw. He's a 55% completion percentage career guy. He's even worse this season. He can't hit anyone. All he can do is run. If you shut the run down, he's basically useless. But I have Notre Dame rebounding here. They have to. It's not optional. I have them winning this one, led by their defense, winning 33-13. to That's covering the spread, and it's just barely going over. But that's even pushing it. Can they score 30? 
I don't know, but they have to. They have to to compete in 2024. Our next game is going to be at 4.30 on the CBS Network. We have number 12, Utah, visiting Utah State. Utah, Utes on the road here, 20-point favorites. The over-under is 44 and a half. Utah has a 92.7% chance to win the in-state rivalry here. Cam Rising got hurt last weekend. He was slinging it. They were running the ball. They were playing great defense. He hurts his hand, as usual. He's a 15-year senior. His body's made of glass. He gets hurt, and the Utah offense completely sputters and disappears. It's like 2023 all over again. It's a shame to see because you want to see this Utah team compete at the highest levels. When he's in the game, this is a completely different team. They're going to have a top 20 defense every season. This team is a defensively, physically stacked team. Kyle Whittingham, one of the most underappreciated head coaches in the country. The third longest tenured head coach in the country. This guy can coach. This team can win. They can get physical with anyone in any game. But when Cam Rising goes down, it's completely horrendous. They can't get a first down. All they do is run every single snap. Is Cam Rising going to play this Saturday? They haven't necessarily 100% said yet. But if he doesn't play, this game could get pretty boring. But Utah's probably going to get some defensive turnovers. They might run one back for a touchdown. They'll they'll probably get a couple picks. Utah State's not a pushover, technically. And if Cam Rising's out, they're going to see their chance. They're going to fight to win this game. But I have Utah winning it 33-10, to covering the spread. But I'm going with the under. The, The biggest question, though, is, is Cam Rising playing? Because obviously that could completely change things there. Our next game at 6.30 p.m. on the CW Network. We have number five, Old Miss at Wake Forest. Old Miss on the road at Wake Forest. It's a very odd matchup, but it's fun to see. Wake Forest is not a bad team, but Old Miss, they put all their chips in the win this season. They own the transfer portal, number one transfer portal team. They're stacked at every position on offense, on defense. Jackson Dart is going to have a Heisman-level season this season. They had 76 versus Furman. They had 50-something last week. This team is scoring a lot of points. They have a top five, if not a top three, or one offense right now. They're running it. They're throwing it. They're playing solid defense. Wake Forest is not a pushover. They're probably going to get some points, but Ole Miss, 22.5-point favorite, 64.5 over-under. And the Ole Miss Rebels have an 89.4% chance to win this game. I have Ole Miss winning it the whole game, but I have Wake Forest getting some fourth-quarter garbage points. But Old Miss wins 48 to 20. That's covering the spread. And I'm going with the over. The next game, we have number one Georgia at Kentucky. It's 7.30 p.m. on ABC. This would have been the game day game probably, but Kentucky completely laid an egg last weekend and they were curb stomped by South Carolina. But Georgia on the road, 24-point favorites. The over-under is 45.5. Georgia, a 92.4% chance to win this game. Georgia has a top three roster. Some would argue one or two. They're stacked top five on offense, top five on defense. They have Carson Beck. He's going to light it up this season. They can throw, run. They play great defense. They play solid special teams. Kentucky, their offense completely fell apart last season. Yes, they have the transfer quarterback. He was awful last week. It really doesn't matter. Georgia should control this game, but Stoop sometimes plays Georgia really physical, really close. Maybe they got caught completely ignoring the Gamecocks last week, preparing for this Georgia game, and it came back to bite them. I have Georgia winning this one 38 to 16 that's covering the spread and i'm going with the over then at 7 30 p.m on the big 10 network we have uni visiting number 23 nebraska nebraska 32 and a half point favorites here the over under is 48 and a half this game's going to be a blowout it's not going to be close there's not much to say here nebraska completely dismantled colorado the score did not give full justice to how bad the beating was they dominated in every facet they are so physical at the line of scrimmage on defense on offense, they run the ball downhill. They don't have turnovers. Dylan Riola is a freshman. He looks like a legit quarterback. They're going to have the sky for at least three years. The future is bright in Nebraska, finally. They are a staple college football program. We want to have them back. Matt Rule, great coach. I have Nebraska winning this one easily. It could even be a shutout, but I have them winning 
52 to 6, obviously covering the spread, and I'm going with the over. Then our final game at 7.45 p.m. on the SEC Network. We have Kent State at number 7, Tennessee Volunteers. Tennessee at home, 49-point favorites. The over-under, 62.5. Tennessee, a 99% chance to win this game. This 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 game is obviously not going to be close at all at any point of the game. The biggest question is, that's a 49-point spread. That is massive. That's pretty hard to cover because you can literally win 48 to nothing 49 to nothing, and you technically didn't cover the spread, so I hate spreads that high. I'm going to completely avoid this game. I don't like betting on these massive spreads because you could dominate and yet still not cover the spread. But Tennessee, they're averaging 60-something points a game. Josh Heupel, they have Nico at quarterback. They have Squirrel White. This team is loaded. They can throw the ball. They can run the ball. And what about that Tennessee defense? They had six sacks last week. They're getting out for the quarterback. They're getting pressured. They might shut Kent State out. I have Tennessee winning this one 60-9. Like I said, it could be a shutout. I have them covering that spread, and I'm going with the over. But I hate those massive spreads. I'm not going to be near this game, but we know Tennessee is going to score some points, and it's going to be fun to watch. So that's our breakdown of our Week 3 college football best bets. Go ahead. Hit the like button, subscribe. If you have any comments on any of these games or any other ones, go ahead and drop them below and I will respond. Thank you.